Good evening, and today I am going to be discussing the photography exposure triangle and how each part of that will interact to create a final image. The objectives are going to be to discuss the three parts of the exposure triangle, to discuss how the individual parts of the exposure triangle will change an image, and then to discuss how the three parts of the exposure triangle will work together to create a final image. Parts of the exposure triangle. There you have aperture, otherwise known as f-stop. You have ISO, and you have shutter speed. Aperture, also known as f-stop, is going to be delineated as a number, f2.8, f4, f8, f22. Uh, the larger the number, the smaller or the narrower that the aperture is actually going to be. Uh, aperture is actually a fractional representation of how wide the aperture is as a fraction of how wide the front element of the lens is. Um, so if you have uh, 50 millimeters at the front of your lens, not, not the focal length, but the front piece of glass is 50 millimeters across, your aperture on an F2 is going to be approximately 25 millimeters wide. And that's going to determine how much light is going to pass through the lens and then uh, strike the sensor uh, or the film and the camera. And this is going to change um, the exposure based on all the other settings. Aperture also will determine your depth of field. If you have a wide aperture, you know, a, a smaller number, you're going to have a very shallow depth of field. Um, if you have a narrow aperture, you're going to have a very deep depth of field. Uh, this can be useful for many things, such as you know landscapes where you might want to show everything. You're probably going to want a narrower aperture so you can get more of it to show as in focus rather than being blurred out. Um, a narrow aperture can be very useful for portraits or things of that nature where you're trying to get the background out of focus where you're not really focused focused on it. You're not really seeing it. So I took these sample images uh, for this project. Um, so this is an f2.8. So it's a fairly wide aperture. It's the widest aperture any of the lenses I currently have can actually go. And you'll notice the Way of King's book is very nicely focused. That was where I set my focus point. And then as you see each of the stacks of books, as you step down closer to the camera, you'll see they become more and more out of focus because you have a very shallow depth of field. And the same as it steps back and the picture in the background. So moving on to an F4, you'll notice that they're a little bit more in focus as you're stepping down. The ones behind are pretty much in focus. And the way of Kings is still fully in focus. Stepping down on F8, as you start noticing that as you're getting closer, you're more in focus. The closest ones are still kind of out of focus. And then the uh, picture in the background is still fairly blurred out. Coming over to an F11. And pretty much all the way down to the third stack here is in focus. And just this last closest one is out of focus. Coming over to an F14, just about everything is in focus. Um, but also at this point, if you were watching over here, you would see, you know, the ISO had to keep increasing to allow more light to come in. All right, ISO. ISO is going to determine the sensitivity of the film or the digital sensor to light. 
Uh, the lower the number, the less sensitive the sensor or the film is to light. And it's going to require more light or longer exposure to that light for your images to actually show up. Um, higher ISOs can be used... Um, uh, to help you shoot in darker areas, um, such as sports or uh, wedding receptions. The trade-off on that is that higher ISOs tend to introduce grain and noise into the image. So here is a similar example to what I did with the aperture. This one is set with a constant aperture all the way across. And all I did was I increased the ISO. So I pretty much exposed so that at ISO 100, it's pretty well evenly exposed. You come over, I bumped up the ISO to 200, it's starting to become overexposed. I bumped it up to 400, it's really overexposed. And then 800, again, is very overexposed. And really, pretty much you wouldn't be able to use this. Now, as I mentioned, high ISO can increase your grain. So here's ISO 100. Everything looks pretty clean. Jump up to ISO 16,000, and you'll notice these sort of dots, this grainy appearance. That's the grain or the noise that's introduced by having a high ISO image. If you look over here, we can zoom in, and it's clean. But here we have the sort of dot pattern, and that's caused by how the sensors work. Now, every camera, a uh, digital camera, is going to handle high ISO different. So one camera might handle all the way up to 12,000, and the grain's not going to be really all that bad. Another camera, you might get to 1,000 ISO, and the grain is so bad, it's really almost an unusable image. All right, and the final part of the exposure triangle is going to be shutter speed. Shutter speed is how long the shutter is going to be open and exposing the film or the sensor to the light coming through the lens. Long shutter speeds can be used for various things, such as astrophotography, where you're trying to get the stars to come in, but they're not really all that bright, or light painting, or other sorts of artistic things of that nature. A fast shutter speed is going to freeze motion in sports, uh, dancers and gymnasts, um, you know, anything where there's a lot of movement where you want to freeze that. Uh, shutter speed is also going to change the amount of light reaching the sensor. So maybe I want that blurred background, but it's a really sunny day out. So I'm using it f2.8 which is allowing a lot of light to come through the lens but that might be too high even if i have my iso at the lowest it down like an iso 100 so then i'm i might change this set my shutter speed to two thousandth of a second or five thousandth of a second and that's going to significantly cut how much light can make it through the lens and hit the sensor. So I can use that wide aperture, but I don't have a highly overexposed image. Um, really, that's kind of the premise of that. Yeah, thank you all for watching and I hope your semester was good and I hope you enjoy your summer.